The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He is the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy and Alessia. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. What's up, Alessia? Hello. Man, things got really spicy for the show between us. <laughs> things got a little heated. I do appreciate to be critiqued, though, and I sincerely mean that. We were talking about how the social media needs to look better. I'm like an old 29-year-old. Like, the way I do things works, but it's not very hip. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on it, Alessia. Yeah. And I noticed that with all millennials trying to learn social media is there's like a whole generation that does it differently than Gen- the Gen Z's do the social media is differently than the millennials do it to when the Gen X's do it. Gen X's think you can click the link in the bio. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So w- what I'm saying is <clears throat> it's a generational divide of technology. It's very fascinating. Yeah, social media is constantly changing and every generation handles it differently. And I think I feel more like my mom every day where I'm like, how does this work? And what is TikTok? I hate TikTok. I will go on TikTok to upload my videos at Ryan Hoppy Radio. They do pretty well. I log off because the algorithm is creepy. Whatever I was looking up on Google for advice earlier in the day, they'll have videos about that same topic. And I then know, I, it's so And wild. I feel very targeted, and it's not fun. YouTube, the algorithm's like, here's a motivational speech, or here's an, another hip-hop song you would like. I'm more of a YouTube guy because I'm 29 years old, going on 30. But what I'm saying is this. I'm just saying that I'm more of a YouTube guy. You know what I mean? I prefer that over TikTok. I don't feel attacked there. Right. I accidentally did something stupid today. I was trying to put Monster Jam on YouTube for my son. He's obsessed with monster trucks. And now YouTube has YouTube TV. So I guess I accidentally clicked on that app and I was like, what is going on with YouTube? And it made me like subscribe. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I had a freak out. I was like, oh my gosh, now you have to pay monthly to like watch videos on YouTube. Like what are the parents of the world going to do? And then I realized, I guess there's two different um, apps for YouTube and I clicked on the wrong one. So right. Traditional YouTube is still there. Thank God. Okay. YouTube Red is no commercials, and then um, a lot of old school radio shows I like are on YouTube, so if you have YouTube Red, you can turn off your phone screen so you can listen to the music that's on YouTube without having to have your screen on. If you don't have YouTube Red, you can't turn off videos. You have to listen to music through the videos, so that's one reason why I have it. And second, I have worked in radio for 11 years, and all the shows I've worked on have used sound effects. And if I'm not signed into YouTube, it'll have a seven second uh, commercial and then the sound effects already gone. So, for example, if uh, we're talking about something on Pat and Aaron, for example, we uh, this morning we're talking about how much me and Aaron grew up watching Bill Nye, the science guy in science class. And if a teacher didn't want to teach that day that we had that they would just put in a VHS of Bill Nye, the science guy. At that same point, because I was logged into my YouTube account, I was able to type in Bill Nye theme song and within eight seconds was able to have it up. If I wasn't with a paid YouTube account, it would have gone with some L'Oreal hair commercial for 15 seconds and then it would have been at the tail end of talking about Bill Nye and then it would have been too late. So that's that's the reason I pay for YouTube. That makes sense. And then you'll be watching something and... Oh, that, I should pay because commercials... Ah, uh, this makes sense. And then the commercials are always... <laughs> we've talked about this a few times. Commercials are always louder. The voice will be like down here 
and I, uh, it's just like Jesus Christ. Right. And then my son doesn't know how to do skip ad yet. So every time a video finishes, I have to skip. I sound like the worst parent ever right now. Like yeah, sticking you, my friend. In you've my said mind. other things. You've never ever have given off vibes like you're a bad parent but saying that you're not <laughs> saying that your son doesn't know what skip ad means is yeah. the most infuriating thing you could have a poopy diaper in the other room right but him not knowing about skip ad is probably worse than anything it's that is my lazy parenting coming out where i'm like oh i have to skip like, this ad click for it, you click as, it now. yeah as i st- as I stick you in front of a screen rather than like really, this is when I'm just like super busy, y'all. What's your, what's your kid's name, Maddie? Mateo. I want to call him Maddie for the radio. Maddie, Maddie, click on that button now. You got to get on that all the time. You got to make sure Maddie, you know, gets very soon. You're going to have a problem with Maddie where Maddie's going to want to watch grown up things and you're going to be like the mom dealing with it. You're not going to be the young millennial anymore. You're going to be having arguments over movies and TV shows. It's going to be feel fun. Like we're, we're already there. My eight year old wants one thing. And what does my, she want? She wants like Harry Potter. Like she always wants to watch like Harry Potter. She asked if she could watch Wednesday. What's wrong with Harry Potter? No, it's fine. But then my two-year-old wants to watch Monster Trucks. And then there's like arguing about whose turn it is to watch. And I'm like, you know, we have a laptop. Someone can go in the other room and watch it. But then I want us to all be together and like choose something together. So we're in the same room enjoying it instead of all on different devices in separate rooms. Anyways, um, yeah. So they're already arguing over screen time. And I try to limit it. But lately life has been hectic and you got to do what you got to do i never thought i would be that parent but i am i'm never gonna really do this but i really want to just like go to the side of the howard franklin and not jump off because that wouldn't be a far jump anyway but i just want to grab my phone and just throw it in the water and never have it again it's so easy to reach me at all times it's like oh my god i missed 2004 i was too young then Like, I'm getting, like, text messages right now about things, and I'm like, can I I just focus for an hour? Jesus Christ. I miss coming home to, like, my parents' house when I was younger and clicking, like, you know, the voicemail machine to see who called, and, like, the light would be blinking if you had voicemails, and you pressed it, and it'd be, like, telling you who called and who left a number. Like, no one even has home phones anymore. Yeah, whenever I'm like... Remember home phones? Back when I applied for a new job back in August, it was like home phone, and I was like, 84734, and then it was like cell phone, and I was like, 84734. You know what I'm saying? I just put it as the same, because right. I never really fill it out that often. I don't even know why often. they ask home phone anymore. Spectrum does. Whenever I log into my Spectrum account, I always forget my Spectrum and Duke Energy account, probably because I'm in denial that I have to have those... F- Fucking accounts. I yeah. hate Duke Energy. I, I, I fuck you. Go fuck yourself. So I probably don't passionate. want to remember the. Pa- I fucking hate Duke Energy. Why do you hate Duke Energy? Because they're garbage. They're fucking expensive. This whole they planet, are. I cry because so. I need, it's a hundred million fucking degrees out. Yeah. So I have to pay for the, you see how cold it is in here? Solar energy makes more sense. I can't stand the way things are like done. Like I feel like. Yeah, we're screwed. There's like common sense to everything and then we just like don't do it. But um, I was talking to somebody who recently moved here from California and I was like, gosh, it's so expensive here. And they're like, no, like you should live in Cali. Like why? They're like a shoebox is like, they're like a shoebox, like apartment is like $800,000. And I'm like, damn, how do people survive? Oh, it's so worth it over there. There's no traffic and homeless people taking shits in the road. Listen, California, I went there in 08, 2010, 2011. It was cool then. Whatever, because my uncle lives out in Los Angeles. I went to San Francisco. It was, it was fun. I see the footage of the city that I haven't been to in about 15 years, and that what I saw 15 years ago is not the same city. I have... Okay, well, really? I, I, I have so much? I have applied for a job in LA, but not saying I never want to work in California. Right. But God damn, it's not the same. It is just... I think it's gone up more. And also, it's like such a divide. I also was talking to somebody about this the other day, but like in the United States, you can visibly see 
the cultural divide um, between different economic statuses. You know, I don't want to use the word poor, but you can kind of tell the difference between how people dress, the car they drive, neighborhood they live in. And you can tell different parts of town and things like that. When I was living in Spain, it didn't matter your socioeconomic status. Everybody dressed the same. Everybody looked the same. They looked put together. They looked well to do. And you couldn't tell the difference. And um, cars were modest. Of course, you had like nicer vehicles, of course. But for the most part, it's more of an even playing field. And I think, like you said, you probably went to California and the rich are richer and the poor are poorer. And it's just different. And the rich out there are insufferable to be around. And it's hard to like know that. I mean, insufferable. everybody can make their own money, but it's still like hard to know that so many people are suffering. I'm just, other people are like just so wealthy, like just filthy wealthy. It's not even that I go, a person shouldn't be allowed to be rich. I don't like that mindset. Right, right. Agree. But at the same time, it's like, Jesus Christ, don't act like you're better than me because you got more zeros in your bank account. Agreed. Right. If anything, the people that have more zeros in their bank accounts are the ones that have like marriages that aren't working and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones throwing shots. Right. I know that um, comedian. Yeah. Well, for example, like the rich that have huge houses, they need a huge house to hide all their skeletons. There are so many skeletons with rich people. It's the unspoken thing. There is definitely a difference. You're all weird. <laughs> I just feel like so many famous people get to that place. And obviously, if you're rich, you're not necessarily famous. But a lot of famous people that have been in the limelight and are wealthy have expressed like, you know, once you get it, it's not all that and um, makes you realize what life's all about. If so. you're rich, you're going to be in the room. Like if you're rich, I'm not talking about all oh, you're doing well and you're living loot with a mansion. I'm talking about your house is worth $3.5 and you're hanging out with CEOs and you have your own like box at the Tampa Bay Lightning Games or at a race game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what I'm saying is this, those people that are completely out of touch are the ones that are wild. Those are the ones you are like, they're the ones hanging out in the same room as the, the rappers and the athletes. Have, I've been around it occasionally. It's fascinating because the rappers and the athletes just have greater than life egos and you just go, it's okay, buddy. I know you think you're better than me because you swing a bat or whatever. And that goes with anything. I think, you know, you think you're better than me because you're a good actor or you're a good rapper. But you wake up in the morning and you got to take a dump and you're going to die someday and you have to get the same amount of sleep as me at night. I've always, because I've been around rich people that are quiet about being rich and not flashy, you don't have to be a C word when you're rich. It's not a part of the game plan. It's actually added in for no reason. It's actually preferred if you're rich as F and you're not a sea bag. I feel like rich or poor, you can always be a sea bag. I feel like rich or poor, you can always be in your ego. It just could be exemplified if you have money and hang out with, um, you know, high society. Yeah, if you got the money and you're out there about to buy Beyonce tickets. Fans getting information for Queen B. Oh, I'm so excited. Pre-sale tickets for Beyonce's North American Renaissance World Tour launching Monday. You going? Uh, My friend that's traveling through Europe sent me a link to buy tickets in Stockholm. And they were like... Syndrome? They were like the most affordable. They were... um, 7,000. 130 euros, which is essentially 130 us it's like um, the euro uh, the euro and the us dollar is almost the same that right is now. so cheap yeah I that mean, is so and i know that's not cheap it was but for beyonce bleeds. yeah that, for nosebleeds nosebleeds would go for 700 here yeah no 100 percent. and oh, single the money i would have spent somewhere else i could have you know i can just fly there and enjoy a different country and see the concert too so hell yeah you're gonna be up there drunk as hell single ladies is gonna be on you're like this is my jam Y'all. It's time to 
there was no deja vu of Taylor Swift's pre-sale meltdown in November, with fans of both stars like friends Lindsay Myers and Laura Hopkins saying things went smoothly. Oh, that's good. What are they going to say? They didn't go smooth, smoothly? I love when they ask the family or friends their take on it, and it's somebody who has a lot of power. What are they going to go? Oh, it went pretty average. <laughs> I, I love that. It's great. It's, it's great reporting because you're going to always get an honest answer right. when the friend of a rich person is asked. That's totally, they're not going to go, oh, she is kind of being a bitch lately. Right. Get out of here. I, 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 it's something I've noticed. It's, it's just like a filler it's, talk. It's, it's like holds no va- uh, value. Exactly. It's <laughs> fluff. Yeah, it really matters to me. Lindsay's mom got an access code and was able to grab tickets in just eight minutes. Floor seats for 350 apiece. Wow. Floor seats? That's cheap. I That's would what's... spend 350 for floor seats. I was about to spend 150 in the nosebleeds. I'd much rather sit on the floor. Where was that at? It was kind of like almost refreshing to see that there were so many, so many options so that like a lot of people could go. But there was still heartbreak for some, even Beyonce super fans like Nikki Patel got waitlisted. And how- who are, and who are you and why are you? This is Nikki Patel. She's one of the 100 million fans of Beyonce and her wonderful music on this planet. Oh, but we're going to talk super about fan. someone. Yeah. So important. How's that feel? I'm offended. I mean... Did Ticketmaster not see my purchase history? The- they don't care, honey. They, what they what they care about is that you make the money. I just called a woman, honey. I'm gonna complain. Uh, I am going to say this though: you probably pay eighty bucks too much when you buy something off of that website. Tickets will be three fifty. It's right. going to end up being like nine thousand. They just have random little prices that are like Jesus Christ. Son that of just God. happened to me with buying Monster Jam tickets. They were like. 70 a piece or 75 a piece and then with the fees they ended up being 150 a ticket and i was like what in the heck what is going on yeah crazy fees never used to be that much and i'm so used to my old radio job where i always got tickets always yeah, that's right we used always to. always never once did mike olivero Ever not come through. Mike Olivero probably for me went 36 for 36 on any concert ticket I ever wanted. That's nice. That's cool. I got the hookup, but not like as good as you. Everyone loved you. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way. She- in what in what universe did everybody love me? You love me and you think everybody did. <laughs> I haven't talked to anybody in like seven months. It's really fascinating when you go through breakups of anything and you're just like, I don't talk to them anymore. Like it's kind of refreshing. It's kind of relaxing. It's kind of less ego filled. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a season of being alive. I have lost like 35 pounds and quit drinking. Oh my God. We've lost a combined what? 65 pounds. I was going to say 37. That's like a <laughs> child. We've lost. You have dropped a lot of weight. Have you been lifting at all or carrying your kids or just anxious or what's going on Do with I you? Do I look? I haven't been You look out. like you have you been no i have not i don't know Urgh. it might be like imaginary flab where it looks like muscle no that is muscle what is, is it did you, hit, <laughs> did you hit up devin prasad at fitsagefitness.net i need to that's next i need to get toned here's a topic speaking of working out do I sound weird today? You always sound Should weird. I so do I. Should I disclaimer that I am under the weather in case I sound raspy? You always kind of sound that way. You just sound a I little never, more raspy. I than today. never sound raspy. Okay, what? What were you going to say? What's the key to finding energy to work out when you really don't want to? And I'm not saying sleeping in till nine, really not wanting to, where you literally have no excuses because you got a perfect eight hours of sleep like in my old life. But now that I'm getting up every day at 3.30 doing all of this and that. I'm like, oh, I haven't worked out in two months. I feel like a slob. I know I shouldn't be talking myself down. You worked out the other day. I feel like I should be asking you this question. I, I worked out, when did I work? I haven't worked out since like December. I haven't worked out all this. a picture at the gym with your oh, trainer. No, that was from like two years ago. It was for his birthday. And wow. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I thought no, you were working flat. out. Look at this chub. Look at this gut. <laughs> I'm looking. Hell yeah, it's so chubby. 
I was feel uh, weird that I just showed you my gut. I saw something in the news that what? was men complaining that the dad bod is becoming normalized because they feel that <laughs> the food industry and the health industry in the United States is just pushing obesity. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you love that? They were basically shaming the body positivity movement when it came to men and women, but saying that the dad bod is encouraging. Who is this? Jordan Peterson? Who is one of the, one of those guys that, you know what the problem is? I like you know the body what? positivity movement. I don't feel like. Could I tell you something? Tell I'm gonna me. be. I'm gonna be real with you. Mm. That's not every guy. I don't think that normal guys don't think that. You know what happens is you have a Jordan Peterson, or before he went to prison, you had an Andrew Tate, and like I've said before, Ew. there's the ten percent that they say about picking up girls and it being easier for girls. Then for guys, that's correct. But the other 90% is absolute garbage. And what happens is it's on TikTok, it's on YouTube Reels, it's on everything. And then women get a perception that every single dude thinks this when I've never, I've never, I've never heard this concept. And then dudes get the same thing about women where they watch female speakers and they go, oh, women are whores. Oh, the world is so messed up because I'm going to tell you right but now. But you're Alessia so off Calandra, topic. Do you believe in the body positivity movement? Or I'm telling not? you, no one's talking about that. You're saying they are. It's Poo. all over. That's it's what all- I'm getting at. Is <laughs> wherever you're getting your news from, trust me, Instagram. no dude. Exactly, your algorithm is showing you things you're into. So dad it's going to be some. It's, yeah, it's going to be like dad bods daily, like some newspaper. Oh it's gosh. probably where you got your news from. Well, either way, you're what, just looking for a dad bod, and you want a dad bod in your life so badly. I know. Um, or do you need perfect I, muscles? I like the body positivity movement. I think that it's showing people in different sizes. I do think health is important, but I also think it's damaging to show just one type of body like we were shown growing up in the 90s. But I just don't know about them saying that this is all propaganda by the health industry to keep who's, people who's unhealthy and fat. Who's saying Who? Oh my god! Tell me who. You know what? I'm going to quote your very reliable sources when we talk no. about the next article no. right here no. from jokernews.com. Alessia, I want to know. I sincerely want to know. Who the fuck is talking about this? Who? People. People, who? Ryan. Tell me. Give me a clip to play oh on YouTube. God. Ryan. If, if, if everybody's talking right, about I'm it, just search dad bod. News. If everyone is talking about dad bods, then I should just be able to go on YouTube and find you any. You haven't seen any of this? You haven't? No, I'm not attracted to men. My algorithm isn't showing me dad bods with two kids because uh, all day I'm trying to find. I am not trying to look at dad bods. Yeah, you are. You love dad bods. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No one loves a dad bod. They just think the guy is attractive enough and then the shirt comes off and they're like, ah, ah." shut up. I try to be understanding because like, I don't know. I, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One of the greatest parts about radio and doing a podcast of a radio show essentially is there's a lot of inside jokes between the coworkers that you don't realize till later on that nobody got. Oops. So what I'm saying is that was an inside joke. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but honestly, the mindset of me not saying that I don't know what I'm saying, I'm more organized and I'm more mentally sane talking nonsense on a podcast than a person who would buy this. Like right now, as I'm babbling over and over again, I'm more clear-headed than you. Next up, Tom Brady. Just last week, the NFL superstar announced his retirement for a second time. And now you can apparently own a piece of that historic moment because someone on eBay is selling an a, a single eight ounce oh, jar of sand. St. Pete Beach sand. Loser! You, whoever buys this, is the most small dick loser. Come to my mansion. I have this on the 
on the light table. Ooh, so wow. funny to thank me. Thank you to have. Thank you for inviting me to your mansion where I cheat on my wife all the time. If I was famous, would I sell random things to this make This is for a rich money? person because I've seen it. This is for a rich person to go, ooh, this is Tom Brady's sand. Hey, uh, remember that sand? Why don't I we donate it. that 10000 I got fl- it. We need to work on that talking over each other. Yeah, you got it. That's the sand. Also, Flint, Michigan. Think about the problems in America where you could, the money to go to fucking sand could go to helping out this country. I'm not saying everybody should get handouts, but you're buying the sand of a player that doesn't give a fucking shit about you. I would love a trend to start where like people just get these mason jars and fill it with sand and they're like, I got the sand and they post a picture, hashtag got the sand. And then everyone around the world is just posting their jar and it's like, who really has it? He doesn't care about you. I, I don't get it. And I this, don't think he cares. And, and this goes with any fan yeah. of any fan base. I've noticed the equivalent to a diehard sports fan, like a die diehard sports fan, is a for a woman is someone that was obsessed with like Glee growing up or like Disney. It's that fandom where you get really obsessed and really into it. You're like, these were the Mickey ears that were worn during the first. Pro- it's just fucking Mickey ears. It's just Tom Brady sand. If you need that item to be cool, you are dead inside. I feel you like- have a void and you have no personality. So you need to rely on other people for a personality. That's clear water beach sand for sure. He was supposedly, that's L.A. I don't think Because he, so. he was at a movie premiere for his 80 for Brady movie. He's already in L.A. Well, that's not even where he played, y'all. So who really wants that sand? It's not sentimental. Giselle didn't him. want him. Good for her. I'm so glad she Oh, yeah. She seems like up. such an ain't. He fucked up. He's going to be He fucked up her. more by coming back this year than by getting dumped by Why Giselle. Why did you stay one extra season to play on the Bucks and give up your supermodel wife. Oh, I'm what sure she's so not high maintenance and annoying. No, I'm sure that marriage was perfect and it was all Tom's fault. How do you not? T- how can you not tell that? Like he just was so selfish in his ways. How can you not see that based on like? Sometimes, we if can you see got a passion in life, eye? sometimes it's you got to go one more season just to retire and ruin your marriage. Sometimes in it's life, called compromise. Sometimes in life. It's not meant to be. Sometimes if the other partner wants to go after their dream and the other person says we're going to break up over that, that's completely fine. Yeah, but if he made an agreement, we don't know what the pretext was to that. He could have made an agreement. She could have been like, okay, babe, okay, look, five I, more seasons, 10 seasons later, he's still going. And she's like, do you remember our thing? And like, then he took advantage of it and kept doing what he wanted, even though they made an agreement as a couple. So no, it's not just about passion. It's about compromise too. It's But it's this. Here's the uh-huh. thing. With her, she supported him for a long time. Yes. He got better with age. He wasn't even as good when he won in 05 or 04 as he was recently. So he got better with age. So when she began dating him and she was the side chick to Bridget Moynihan, no, she wasn't. When she was dating him, he was up and coming. And at that time, players played till 35, 38. So about 13 years ago, he was 32, 33, 34, 35 because they got married in 09. So she's probably thinking, oh, he's going to retire in 2013, 2014. I can pretend to care about football as whenever they showed me in a press box, I didn't look human. Like she did not, like whenever she was at Patriot Games, she looked like she did not care about football. Like some of the football wives kind of get into the game. She was into it. She was in the jersey, always with his name on the back, always cheering. Yeah, she's the wearing the jersey, there. but whenever you saw her in the box, That's you could support. tell she had, She doesn't she, need to know the sport. You're on talk radio talking sports, and you hardly know a thing about sports. Next topic. Whoa. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Everything good with you? Are, are, are you okay? <laughs> no, I, I'm going to ask. Are, are you good? I didn't sleep last night. Because- That's what it is when a woman doesn't sleep. <laughs> the man ends up being the person that's getting whipped. Uh, speaking of getting whipped. Hey. There's a male escort husband of Phil Collins' ex-wife demands she be thrown in jail for six months for flaunting a judge's orders to pay for his leased 
340,000 James Bond, Aston Martin, instead of jetting off to Europe. So basically what's happening is she wants to pay for her male escort, Aston Martin. I bet he's got a riveting personality, that male hooker. I'm sure he's a talker and he's real intelligent. I am really <laughs> curious about these male escorts. Like, I really am. I mean, they're obviously good looking men who are like, I want to make it in LA. Yeah. I'm a supermodel or I'm a model, but I'm not making it. But like, let me just go after these rich housewives because I have to still pay my rent here because it's so expensive until I make it big as like what I really and what I really want to do. I feel like that's. How, no one is just like, I want to be a male escort. And like, I feel like females are definitely like, I just want to be an escort. But I feel like men are like more strategic. Like, I don't really want to do this, but I know the high housewives would think I'm gorgeous. And so I'm going to do this to make money until yeah, I'm bro. discovered. Hell yeah. Wow. Making OnlyFans and then you really live in the life. I'm so confused by this. Plant that seed. <laughs> 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856 Oh, he's 33. Wow. Okay, the escort's 33. She's almost 50. Yeah. Older is popular lately. Let me tell you. Oh, and then her husband's 72. Look at this just gap. He's a cute escort. Ugh, I don't... Oh, geez. I can't even see that going down. Like... You really have to have some discipline to just he's, sleep with random people. He's a real Ken doll. Imagine who you get. Like, no personality there. Yikes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it feels so good. Hi, Luke. Think about the, like, desperate women you get that are just sad and just washed up. You know what's sad? You ever had to drive down Nebraska Avenue in Tampa? You ever been over there? Yep. <laughs> That's America. It is so uncomfortable over there. What are we talking about? The Asian spas? I'm confused. What are we talking about? The hookers that are walking down the block that are like 50 pounds that literally are begging for a cigarette and will go, like. Oh, that's weird. I wonder if anybody I know has picked them up. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Have you thought about it? No. Why are you so familiar with Nebraska Ave? <laughs> Just don't drive around in circles. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. This following segment's been brought to you by Rich Kaylee. Let me tell you, he's the best barber around. I like this new hair that I have. Alessia, the, the hair of like being short. I kind of look army, but I feel manly. I feel alive. I should go get that haircut too. I want the Ryan Hoppy special. Could you imagine if we had like a picture and it's like we have the same hair? That would be <laughs> funny. You would look pretty but crazy if you had my hair. I you would look it. really, because you're a pretty person. You're one of those like pretty people where some pretty people really lose a few rankings in whatever one to 10 it is. So like an eight, if they get, her, they get their hair short, there'll be a five. And that's just me being honest. You can judge me. I'm a good six and a half. Here's the thing. You're one of those like 9.5s where if you went bald, you'd be a 9.9. .9. Like you're <laughs> really pretty. Really? That's no, funny. I'm trying to insult you. Like, you know, I wonder though if my scalp, like if I shaved it, like do you notice any like freckles on your head? Like what if I would be like so obsessed like, oh my God, what does my scalp look like? Do you like? ever get a pimple on your head? Are you doing like you're washing your hair and you're like, oh, I got a pimple. On my it's the worst. You just feel like a scumbag. Does that happen more with your head being shaved? I don't know. I think it happens with uh, living in Florida where it's 110 degrees out at right. all times. Right. Yeah, totally. And you're sweating. But no, I have good hygiene. I'm totally projecting a great image right now. This is a great life read to be associated with a barber. <laughs> RichKBarber.com. He's the best around. This is also being brought to you by West Chase Printing. I need to get new business cards. You need to get business cards. We all need to get business cards. I do. We need to get banners, too. You got to go to westchaseprinting.com. This is also being brought to you by fitsagefitness.net. I know Devin's going to be listening to this. Devin Prasad, who's in charge of Fitsage Fitness. And let me tell you. I need to go see him. It's been months, and I just said I needed to tone. So we need to, I need to go. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, I need to make it happen. 
I'm doing these live reads, talking about them, and I'm not even going. I'm just so fucking tired. Maybe but I got to make it to happen. Us. Yeah. He's got different memberships. So when you go to fitsagefitness.net. Where is it located? He can meet you at any gym or wherever. He's just kind of out there hanging out. Oh. He's really legit, though. So, like, the it's thing not is. not a gym. It's a person that comes to you. He goes, if you have, like, a membership to another gym, you go in there. He scans the key. You scan the key. And then you work out. Okay. You, like, meet at the gym. That's cool. Yeah, so he been, can come to us. Yeah. That's great. Also, this is being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts. I want to go back soon. Yeah, I Amir do. Amir Academy of Martial Arts and start punching that bag and taking on my aggression. That would be nice. I feel so good to take out your aggression. But then you kind of feel a little manic afterwards because then you're like, woo, I get how boxers and UFC fighters can be the biggest scumbags ever because this amount of energy is crazier than cocaine. I have no idea what cocaine's like. <laughs> 856 49 Hobby. That's 856. Four nine four six seven seven three. Speaking of taking out your aggression. Yeah, what's coming up next? What's going on with the aggression? Hit the button. Don't tell me what to do. Happy hour. Happy hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Uh, that's how I feel. If I could describe in words how I feel. Uh, uh, do you feel uh, right now? Mine would be like. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I should have. Luna just ran right across the room. You scared <laughs> Luna. Luna's been a little more comfortable, and then you're screaming. Do you see sorry. her peeking through the blinds at my balcony of the pool? Name drop. Aww. When you have something nice, I kind of get why people name drop. I have an apartment with a pool and a hot tub. Not a hot tub. I just, <laughs> just damn it. <laughs> Almost. And I have a flat screen TV and a buffet on the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I am so hyper right now. I don't even know how I'm, I'm alive. For the past four months, I've been getting up every day at 430. I know. Every day it's fun. I don't fun. know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, having two kids. And that's what makes this work and our friendship work and everything work. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not attracted to me, and I think you have too many kids. And it's like perfect. Because people are like, don't they're like, is it a weird working with a hot chick? I'm like, no, not if you, uh, you treat a woman equally and not everything is someone you have sex with. You're like I have funny. so many dudes message me, uh, is she single? Is she single? She sounds high maintenance, she's hot, she's single. She sounds high maintenance. What I'm, is high maintenance to you? Guys? I am taking care of you. You are going to get the right <laughs> man, okay? I I'm here to protect you. I, I'm you on the need a man. You need that in a dude. Female that, colony. That will, you need someone with like two kids who's lost and got their heart torn, and then you just mix that together. I Sometimes met a really that nice works. Guy. I went when? on a date. When? After your Applebee's date, I went somewhere way nicer than Applebee's. Oh, wow. I, good for you. You could, have, <laughs> you could have gone anywhere, and that would have been nice than that casual date. So, the floor is yours. Where'd you go? I went to Good Fortune in downtown St. Pete. Woo. It was delicious. Yeah. And <laughs> I was turning. I always do this. Ryan I was turning always off. mutes me. <laughs> no, no, it's because I was turning my mic Every off. Every show. Go. So where'd you go? You muted. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, it was really nice. I, I didn't want to go. I almost canceled. And then I ended up going and really enjoyed the company. The guy had such manners. It was so nice. And it was a great date. Yeah, it was really nice. Is this the one you were talking to me off air about? Mm, no, no, definitely not that guy. <laughs> so it's someone new. Yeah. You didn't tell me about this last time. Well, it just transpired. Yeah, he's cool. He What's um, so cool about this guy? Well, he's really smart. He's yeah. from a different country, which I like. I feel like that's extra points. You um, love that. That's like your turn on. Like when a, when a guy says, I'm from Germany, you're like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> you love that. If a guy says, oh, I'm from Brandon, Florida. 
like the Sahara Desert, but you find out a guy's from Spain or whatever, you're like, oh my God, I must marry him immediately. Yes. That is you. I, I, you love it. I don't like the Florida boys. I don't think I like the American boys, but. You do not. I don't. You should just move to Spain and just move with the kids and just never be seen from again. I would love that. Do it. Okay, fine. I'm doing it. I'm never going to hear from you again. It was a really nice date though. He's cool. And I am so glad I went. Sometimes we got to push ourselves to go and meet new people. It's really just about meeting new people. That's what it was like. But, and, and also just like the, you know, courting isn't really a thing anymore, but he like kind of courted me a little. Were you guys walking down the block and he was on the left side of the sidewalk to make sure you didn't get hit by a drunk driver? Was he doing those manly things like I holding like the door things. for you, holding the door for you and like opening? Like, did I'm surprised it- you even know about them. It wasn't like I was in a relationship with a class you won for two years and you learn a little bit of things. Yeah. He was, it's not like I have a little experience under my belt. You know what the best part is too? What? Is like you feel so seen. Like, yeah. here's what I realized. It's called going on a date and liking somebody. When you go out with different people or you hang out, even if it's a friend or family member, like you are different around different people. And yeah. some people bring out the toxic traits in you and some people bring out the really positive All right, traits let's, in you. Let's not get off the train tracks here. No, I'm let's just be saying, positive. No, no, no. Let's brought, not even talk about getting off the train tracks. I'm not getting We're off. We're going to keep the train <laughs> on the tracks. I'm so, not off the train. So what was the day like? Okay, How did it he go? just like was very complimentary. Yeah. And was just very uh, observant about like my communication and what I do. And I don't know, like he just was so respectful. He had class. He had manners. He had values. Yes, I love this. I love this. Yeah. This is the best news ever. Yes. I'll you- forget about it after the show. But in this moment, this is the best news ever because I'll go back to thinking about myself and that's all I think about. But for right now, you that's know, you know the best thing that's ever heard. not classy? What? Yeah. You want to know what's not classy? What? Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning fan puts Florida Panthers mascot in a headlock. We need to talk about some of these Lightning fans that need to chill out. Okay. And hot. I mean, sports fans in general. But How do a I, headlock okay, I, I for the mascot. Do you think the mascot was genuinely a f- fearing for his or her life? or? It's one of those things... And I'm not just going to say, I, I don't, so I work in sports radio, but there seems to be a growing number of like aggressive chads who are becoming Bolts fans. Chads. And, 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 am I correct or am I incorrect? You're around the lightning more. I've gone to five games in my life. You go to five a week. You know is why that a, is, is. Is there a growing number of like aggressive macho men that are liking it or am I incorrect? You can tell me if I'm incorrect and I won't dig myself in a hole. I haven't seen that, but. What have you seen? If that is a thing, it's because all the Northerners are moving down to Florida and they are way more aggressive when it comes to hockey than the Floridians Let's are. Let's beat each other up over millionaires that wouldn't even look at us in a crowd. We're going to fight because we got small dicks. Enough. You make all men look bad. You got to fight over sports. You losers. You are... People sit- were chasing my brother when he went to a, a Chicago Blackhawks game. He was wearing his light. Chicago jersey. fans were doing that? Yeah, they oh, were chasing thank, him. Thank God we have that city, that, that dump. Yeah, he was like genuine. Like, he's a big Tampa Bay Lightning fan. He was up there with his friends, all wearing the Lightning jerseys. And after the game, the- like, they were being followed. And he was very, like, worried. And my brother's a big guy and can handle himself. But still, like, sports fans take it next I'll level. Ask him. You ever been to, like, a Cleveland Cavs or Browns game? Uh, no. I'm having, my brain is overreacting right now and I'm twitching. So when I used to, the next two words, it just randomly came in my brain and has nothing to do with the city I'm about to talk about. For some reason, my brain is thinking of the word white trash. I don't know why. Oh, America. Um, It could be America. I don't know why when I think of the word Cleveland, I think of the word white trash. It's just a coincidence. Yeah. Fun times in Cleveland again. Still Cleveland. 
Come on down to Cleveland Town, everyone. Under construction since 1868. See our river that catches on fire. It's so polluted that all our fish have AIDS. We see the sun almost three times a year. This guy has at least two DUIs. The flats look like a Scooby-Doo ghost town. Don't slow down in East Cleveland or you'll die. True. Our economy's based on LeBron James. Buy a house for the price of a VCR. Our main export is crippling depression. Can I ask a question? One second. This part's offensive. Could be worse though, at least we're not Detroit. Detroit. We're, we're not, not Detroit. Detroit. And then 13 years later, Detroit's the better city. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Alessia? Well, I just realized going back to this uh, Panthers mascot. Yeah. The Florida Panthers mascot is a rat. Why? Because there's a lot of rats in Miami. <laughs> but then again, like, why is the Tampa Bay Lightning a giant bumblebee? Oh. He's a bumblebee, right? Oh, I do. I'm excited about the Savannah Bananas coming to town. You hear about that? The minor league baseball team, the Savannah Bananas. Savannah Banana? Hell yeah. I'm I go like to, that name. I'm going to go to a game. That's cool. There's like a hundred games and a hundred events in my life that I've never gone to, but I went to because I said I was going to go to, mm -hmm. and Savannah Bananas is one of those. You ever have that where you see something on the calendar, you're like, I'm totally going to go see Bon Jovi in July, and then the show happens, and you're like, well, I didn't go, but in another universe, I went. Right. That's kind of the Savannah Bananas. I'm probably not going to go to a game of the Savannah Bananas when they're in town, but like, I'm going to go to one, just in a different universe. Uh, that sounds cool, and it reminds me when I worked for the Tampa Bay Rays, they had, I can't, I wish I remembered the name of this team, but mm -hmm. it was solely like this fun, it was almost like the um, Globe Trotters, but for baseball, and they just hit home runs the whole time, so fans could stand in the stands and hold up their gloves and just like catch fly balls like the whole event, and it was like super, they were called like something sluggers, and like they only hit balls into the stands and it was like super cool to like watch them it was like really impressive i'm trying to find it on google but i but yeah it was like the harlem globe trotters for baseball that was fun to watch and then i also have a really cool event coming up it was supposed to happen a couple months ago in tampa but it got postponed to end of that? february banksy land for all the art lovers i'm going to banksy land to see some banksy art um they're having an exhibit and it is moved from tampa to saint pete so don't forget about your ticket. If you got it a couple months ago, they have now scheduled it for the end of this month. I, uh, so I have a company email and it won't let me log in unless I call the phone for a confirmation and my phone's on the other side of the room. So I don't have all the info, but I do know that Ray's Fest is Saturday February 18th, and the Pat and Aaron show will be live from 9 to 11 a.m. It's going to be my first ever Rays Fest, so I'm excited as hell. This year, the Tampa Bay Rays are going to win the World Series. It's going to be because I'm watching every game, baby. I'm out there supporting the team. Really? Are you? You're into it? I'm going to get into it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to totally watch it. I, I actually will. I'm just pumped. I'm going to Fan Fest with the morning show. It's exciting times. That's awesome. It is. Good for you. And you're going to an art show and going on dates with handsome men. <laughs> We've really made it in life. Polar vortex has descended over the Northeast, bringing sub-zero wind chills from New York to Maine. Nancy. Hey, Florida, is the 40 degrees at night maybe not as big of a deal when you hear about sub-zero weather? Polar vortex has descended over the Northeast, bringing sub-zero wind chills from New York to Maine. Nancy Chen shows us what people are dealing with. What are uh, we going to deal with in response to, to this? A bunch of... Uh, Transplants that are going to move here in 2024, 2025. If this winter is awful, Alessia, that means we're going to have so many transplants that move here. You ready? Everyone's already moving here. Like by the time your kids are 18, this isn't going to be Florida anymore. It's going to be New York. It's Leave. Be I don't like you. Sure. Oh, you're, you're so New York tough? Cool. Wow, you were born in a city. Wow. Although the only thing I like about the Northerners yeah. moving down. <laughs> I was making sure the clip didn't play over you, but it caused more chaos. Go on. <laughs> 
The only thing I like is that there's a better chance of Italians coming down. Every time I'm on Hinge and I see that someone oh, here yeah. is from New York, I'm like, maybe they're Italian. So either a guy from Europe or a guy from New York who plays the Italian card. That's the way to Alessia's heart. Am I, am I correct? Or am I incorrect? Am I assuming or am I correct that if you were A, born in Europe and handsome as hell with a great accent and a great body until the shirt comes off, or if <laughs> you are Italian and you're from Long Island, line them up. We can find your boyfriend right now. There's other credentials too. Like what? Mm, I like a guy that can cook. Oh, that's good. Good luck finding that. Do you cook? <laughs> mm, not at all. And that's why we're co-hosts. <laughs> the brutal cold came in with a fury. In Oswego, New York, frigid temperatures and howling winds. Look at that video. I noticed the visual. Sorry, guys. Uh, look at how cold that is. That looks awful. There's like no sunshine. You know, there's like five sunny days in Cleveland. And that's noon. Yeah. It blew in overnight, creating hazardous conditions. But it's New England that will feel the brunt of a polar vortex, yeah. bringing double digit wind chills. I grew up dealing with this for 21 years, and let me tell you, it's as awful it is as it appears. Like, if you think, like, the cold weather down here sucks, it does suck because it's cold, but let me tell you, that is inhuman. It hurts human beings and their bodies. My mom probably has arthritis because of it. It's, it's fucking bone-chilling cold. Physically and mentally draining to yes. live in that kind of weather. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> and then if you're lucky enough to live in a good city like Chicago, then it's kind of worth it. But if you're in one of the Rust Belt cities, then you're, you're, you're having to deal with the Pittsburgh people or the Baltimore people or even scariest of all, the Cincinnati people. <laughs> that city, Cincinnati, home of Joe Burrow, is right next door to Kentucky. <laughs> You know your geography, Ryan. Have I, it's, I also just know cities. Have I said enough, if a city is right next door to Kentucky, I mean, the only thing that's good from there is KFC Chicken and Jack Harlow. KFC Chicken's actually from Florida. They just called it that. I'm kidding. I made that up. I was about to say, don't take <laughs> away the one thing they have. You ever been to a KFC buffet? Uh, no. A KFC have buffet? Have you ever been to an Applebee's? <laughs> one of my listeners called you high maintenance for how you treated me on the last podcast and said where are you supposed to go oh wow well don't give him my number <laughs> <laughs> he's one of our passionate listeners all right hi <laughs> it's very funny though because it's just where are we supposed to go I've, I've had a few people come up to me about the date, and I'm like, oh, I forgot I talked about that on my podcast. Mm -hmm. Pretty much a girl's trying to keep it casual and was like, I want to go on They're a casual like, what? date. what? You took her to Applebee's? You only took me to Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> they were pissed. Who, my, all my exes? Yeah. They're, like, They're like, what? She got to go to Applebee's? I got to go to a Chinese buffet where... Never mind. Cool. We only... Is Alessia, Crazy Alessia, Buffet Alessia, still a thing? Uh, I don't go. I shit myself the last time I went. Oh. That was a great time. Eating sushi and I'm driving home. I was just thinking of the chocolate. Oh, it was terrible. I just... It was, and then I found out that that place had like 20 cases of roaches in the Ew, kitchen. Oh, that's gross. It's nowhere near the... <laughs> Ent Avenue. I'm not going to say the exact number, but ND Avenue... North and St. Petersburg, Florida. It's gone through like nine different names. But the same result. Wait, really? We're right next door to the... No, what? Tell me. Is that a thing? Ryan just said a name off air that I will not name, but... You have been there? No, I've never heard of that place, of course. What is that? It's a... It's a... Off air real quick.
Oh, I forgot. This uh, place that got caught with roaches is below Alessia's pay grade. So a buffet is not really where she's going. Do you hit up buffets often? Not since 2021 when I shit myself after having sushi that, that was spoiled. The last buffet I went to was... The last buffet I can think of that I went to was... In what, Vegas? 2014. Yeah, don't go. 2013. Unless you like cockroaches. But it was at um, the Greyhound. We had a table. We were watching like the dog races or whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's the type of buffet you would be seen at. That's it was why okay. I love having you on this <laughs> show. But you're so different than me. I'm going to one of the white trash ones. I've said it a lot today. Yin and yang. That's what it's we are. fascinating. Should we get matching tattoos? Like no. Yin and yang? No. I Come almost on. got it. No. Do it with me. No. Let's be trashy together. Just kidding. Tattoos aren't trashy. In today's Duck Bites, Twitter's expansion. The company now says that subscribers of Twitter Blue can post tweets with up to 4,000 characters. Why? Wow. That is an essay then. And all the smarmy liberals and all the right-wing nutjobs can just post their blah, 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 blah. Did I tell you blah, blah, blah? It's like a blog now. Did I say blah, blah, blah? I think I said blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, that's all Twitter is. Blah, 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 blah. Far higher than the current limit of 280. And it says all wow. users, even non-subscribers, will be able to read the longer messages. Oh, please, I, I want to see your, your propaganda. Google Maps just rolled out an immersive view feature in five cities, including New York, L.A., and San Francisco. It uses AI to offer a detailed perspective in the feature. All right. I don't, what is that? I don't know, but I don't mess with AI. Even though it's a YouTube video and it's a CBS News clip, I'm so afraid of AI that I don't even want it near me. So I'm going to talk to the laptop because I know it can hear me. Fuck you and your AI. See, it's I'm so terrified of AI. So like, sometimes my daughter will be like, she won't say shut up. What does she say? She'll yeah. be like, be quiet, Siri. Or Siri's so dumb. God, you're or, such a Siri. Okay, like specifically in the morning. So yes. like in the morning, my daughter's always like, what's the forecast? Let's check. And instead of like letting her use my phone, I'm always like, hey, Siri, what's the forecast today? Or what's the weather like? Whatever. Mm. And then Siri will be like, um, it's 62 degrees with the high of 74 and 16% chance of rain in the afternoons, whatever, whatever. And so then I'm like, oh, honey, it's 63 degrees. You should grab a like, like top or sweater to wear to school and then you can take it off when it gets warm later and she's like oh i don't want to do that siri's so dumb and then i'm like terrified Whoa. i'm like oh my god siri's gonna get you one day you better not you better not talk like that about siri and then i'm like siri just for the record nadia said that my daughter she said that not me i didn't say that wait i my mind is blown because ai is gonna get us Oh, oh my God. Look, Siri's listening right now. Yeah, she was telling. Uh, my phone's going off. I got Siri. breaking news. <laughs> Alessia's daughter is sassy. Yep. Real sassy. Where Man, do you think she gets it from? Where did I get it from? Hanging out with you for 12 shows? You made me sassier than ever. Is this number 12? Have you uh, been? I'm just got probably, I would assume. We should count. Uh, no, I'm good. Our show. Why is that going off? I'm sorry. What? I was like, oh, our hundredth show. Oh, yeah. Speaking of a lot of points. It's one of those records that when you look at it, you go, nobody's ever going to touch that. Yeah. But you're about to touch it. That, that's, this is the record. Who cares, LeBron James, about your team actually making it to the playoffs and winning another championship? Because when you won with the Lakers, it was during COVID when no one really tried. And you were in a bubble in Orlando and since then have not made the playoffs. But hell yeah, congratulate to you. congratulations to you on having the most points ever and being the most selfish all-time great player. Do you really think that about him? We are so I'm up. sorry you've lost in seven finals. Michael Jordan never lost in a final. No, this is a different era. James, a shot in history. It's a record many thought would never be broken. He's like the fourth best true player ever. True heroes lose and get back up. He's, he's today's hero. 
I agree, but he's not Jordan. He's not the best ever. He's like third second. That was a he's not the first. Vibe. No, 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 no. That was no. a completely different. That was so glorious. Jordan never lost when it mattered. LeBron has <laughs> lost. I, I'm not taking anything away from LeBron. They, but LeBron. 2011, when the team really needed him, when the Miami Heat really needed him, Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavericks, the old ass Mavericks, beat him. 2007, the team he took to the finals, he didn't show up. He tried a little bit. And with the Miami Heat, there were times, and then with the Cavaliers, every single time besides 2016, they lost to the Warriors. He lost a lot. I'm sorry, Jordan. He's, a go- he's not a god. He's a Peyton. He's a basketball player and he's beating this record and he did it LeBron, win or lose he's he's there winner but i'm just seeing win all these gen z it. he's the go no no no. can't he, stop won't stop i thought somebody was in my apartment i'm losing knock, my mind knock knock no 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 hee ha the funny farm you ever heard that song no <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to listen to it no describes I, my relationship with him <laughs> here's the thing when it comes to lebron no it's like He's like a Peyton Manning where he's like, he didn't win his, like Brady is Jordan because Brady has all the oh, championships whatever. and Peyton Manning's LeBron. Okay. So you're saying, uh, what, like, what, what, what am I saying? You're saying that if you and I, you're A and I'm B yes. and we're traveling different paths uh-huh. and we end up at the same path, but our road looked a little different. One path is better than another. One, you get a few different uh, flat tires and your car completely totals and you choke when it matters. Yeah, your success rate is not as impressive. It is impressive because you got back up. You could have quit. You could have You could have been deep, but you kept working hard. Congratulations. I'm not saying he's not like the third best ever. Scotty well, Pippen got no credit when he played with Michael for the record. Scotty Pippen is also a really bad person. Really bad. Hmm. Like, really. Like, not a nice man. What do you know about him? No tipping Pippen. He oh. never tipped. No treated tipping every- Pippen. It has a name, too. Oh, yeah. He would get lavish meals with Larsa Pippen. That, that's a fun one. Oh, man. Really? I can- he didn't tip well? No. Damn. He definitely gave Larsa the tip. Happy hour. Happy hour. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.